All right then, so we saw in the last lesson how to make pages and routes, but we also have this layout component right here as well. And this layout component in the root of the app folder essentially wraps any page component in the application. So it wraps the home page and also any other page that we make like this one inside the tickets folder. But why do we need a layout file first of all? Well, if you have certain sections on your website that are on every page, then you can put those sections inside the layout file rather than put them manually inside every page component that you make. For example, a nav bar might go in the layout file because it sits at the top of every page or a footer might go in it because it sits at the bottom of every page. You don't want to repeat those things over and over again for every page that you make. So inside this layout file, you can see a few things going on. First of all, we import the global CSS file, which is also in the app folder, by the way. So that means that the global CSS is being loaded for every single page, which is what we'd want from a global CSS file, right? Next, we're importing a Google Fonts, setting it up down here and then applying it to the body tag. We're going to talk more about adding fonts like this in the next lesson. So let's skip over that for now. Then we have some metadata, which we export. And inside that, we have a title and description properties. So this is how we make metadata for pages in Next Applications. And since this is defined in the layout file, this same metadata is going to be used on every single page. You can override this on a page by page basis, which we'll see shortly. But for now, let's move on to the actual React component for the layout down here. So this layout file takes in a prop called children and that children prop refers to whatever content this component might wrap. Now in the case of Next.js, layout components wrap page components. So the children prop in this case refers to the page component, which is currently being viewed in the browser. And that page component is gonna change as we navigate around the site to different pages. So in the layout template, we have the HTML tag and then the body tag. And inside the body tag, we output the children, the page component. So this is a very, very simple layout file with nothing much inside it, but we can add extra content to it if we want to. For example, I'm gonna make a nav tag inside the body before we output the children. And inside that nav, we can add in an H1 that says Dojo Help Desk. And now if I was to save this file and preview in a browser, we should see that nav and the title at the top of each page in the website. All right, so we can see that on the home page right here. And if we go to forward slash tickets, we can see that as well, hopefully. Yep, right here. Now this is working, but it would be nice if instead of typing in the address up here, we can add links into the nav bar as well. So we can just click on those links to go to those two different pages. Okay, so when we're linking between pages in a next application, we don't use standard anchor tags in our application. We use a link component instead because the link component has extra functionality that we wouldn't normally get with an anchor tag on its own. A part of that functionality is to intercept the request to the server and handle the routing on the front end in the browser. And also when Next.js sees a link component on the page, it prefetches the page that that link navigates to in the background. So that by the time we click on a link, it already has whatever page we need to show ready and waiting, which speeds things up a lot. So let's try adding a couple of links in this nav bar then. So the way we do this is by just making a link tag like this or a link component, and that needs to be imported up here from next forward slash link. Now this needs to have an href prop, just like an anchor tag. And that should be what route this goes to. So for example, for the home page, it would just be forward slash. And for that, say dashboard, that will be the link text. I'm going to duplicate this to do another one. And this will go to forward slash tickets. And then the text for this is going to be tickets. So let's save this and see if it works. All right, so now we can see those two links right here. Now they're not blue and they're not underlined because remember we're using Tailwind and Tailwind strips out all the default browser styles. So that's why they look like this, but we will make these look better later on, I promise. But if we inspect one of these, then we can see that Next has actually just output them as anchor tags in the DOM. Now I said a minute ago, we don't want to use anchor tags and we're using link components instead. Well, yeah, we are doing, but really the link component is just a wrapper for a standard anchor tag and Next.js just gives it those superpowers basically. So it intercepts any kind of requests to the server and it handles the routing browser side instead. So let's give this a whirl. I'm going to click on tickets and hopefully we'll go to the tickets page, which we do. Yep. And then if we go back to the dashboard, hopefully that works. Yep. Awesome. So that's working now.
All right, so there's one more thing I'd like to do, and that is to create a component for the nav bar. So we can put all of this inside that nav bar component and then drop that component inside the layout because as the course progresses, this nav bar is gonna get a bit bigger and I wanna kinda of keep this layout file clean. So what I'm gonna do is make a new folder inside the app directory called components. And this is where I generally put in all my dropping components that can be reused in different parts of the application. Now you don't have to put them in here, you can put them where you want. I'm just trying to keep things organized and I'm gonna call this navbar.jsx. I'm gonna boilerplate this RFC and then I will go back to the layout, grab this nav and cut it. And then I'm gonna paste it right here. All right, now we do need to import the link component in this file and we no longer need it here. So let's cut it from here and let's go and paste it back in here. Oops, should be up here. Okay, so that's pretty much it for the navbar so far. Now let's go back over here. We need to nest the navbar right here. So let's click on that to auto import it. And what I'm gonna do is just a little comment right here to say components. And then I'm gonna grab this import because it's a component import and just paste it right here. That's again, just to keep this file a bit more organized. Any kind of dropping components I generally put under this little comment right here. All right, so hopefully nothing's changed. Everything still works the same way. It's just a little bit more organized now. And now in the browser, we can see it looks exactly the same. Let's make sure the links work as well. Yep, that works. And let's go back to the dashboard. And yep, that works as well. Awesome.